Good afternoon. This is Between the Lines Live at SanduskyRegister.com. I'm Matt Westerold, Managing Editor of the Register, and today we're going to be talking about the company's coming cleanup, and we have five guests. And Luke, why don't we just go ahead and introduce our guests? Um, Right here is Mark Norman. He's an organizer, the organizer of uh, the company's coming cleanup. City manager Eric Whoopser on the end there. Larry Fletcher from Lake Erie Shores and Islands. Tom Ware from Lowe's. Uh, Lowe's, it's just called Lowe's? Lowe's Home Improvement. Lowe's Home Improvement. And that's what this is about. This is about home improvement and city improvement. And Tondra Frisbee from the Nehemiah Center at Campbell School. And Mark... I was going to go to you to lead this out. Why are we here today? What is Companies Coming Cleanup? It consists of really four events that will take place in the month of uh, April and May. Um, the events are intended to um, create a sense of community, uh, create a sense of responsibility that we all can have input into uh, the destiny of the city or the direction it's going and uh, collaboration and to build some optimism as well. And, uh, and so, so there's three days. Uh, well, we actually have four, four events I guess we could break them down into. We have uh, Gateway and Parks Cleanup. That's going to be on April 23rd from 9 to 11. That's a Saturday. That's a Saturday morning. And we uh, currently have about 200 volunteers that will help to clean up uh, all the gateways coming into the city of Sandusky and Cedar Point. So let me just stop you there. 200 volunteers, and that's what you're saying is what this is about, is getting community spirit to, to look at Sandusky in a different way. Right. I mean, we really want to uh, be a better reflection, not only on ourselves and, and our city, but um, the businesses that are here, uh, you know, Fireland Regional Medical Center, the Cedar Point, and the others. You know, they really deserve to have um, a city that is a reflective of, of, of the quality of work that they do and what they do for this, this community. So that's, that's part of it. And one of the things you've been saying for quite some time is it starts with us. Right. It starts with you, it starts with me, it starts with all of us. And, and that's, we, we, we're hoping to get neighbors involved effectively. Yeah, it's, it's, and it's, it's citizenship, you know, something maybe that we've lost track of. It's, uh, it's taking personal responsibility for, for our, our community and, and our future. And we intend this to be an, an, an annual event, but this is the first year. And we expect that uh, this year we're calling it a cleanup. Uh, I don't know that we'll have to call it a cleanup next year uh, because it's just going to be an annual event to have pride in your city. Right, and the company coming, uh, the company's coming comes from uh, a line that Sharon Barnes really uh, came up with as we talked about this. She said, you know, really we have guests coming, and, and as individuals, when we have guests coming to our homes, we get ready for them. You so want to look your, look your best. You, want to, you know, let's put our best foot forward. Let's look our best. And... Uh, so that's really what, uh, how that, that tagline came, came about. And uh, so we're doing the cleanup on uh, April 23rd. On April 30th, we're going to have a drive through dump day similar to what we had this past fall. And we're going to have uh, eight dumpsters, and citizens can bring um, pretty much anything they have around the house that they want no to No nuclear up. waste, though. <laughs> no nuclear waste. Uh, but furniture, mattresses, old toys, uh, appliances, electronics. Um, and this is items. and this is literally a, a, a drop off. You know, you don't have to unload. There's people there to unload for you. You have to load up, and we'll unload, right? right. We'll have uh, the same uh, people that helped in the fall: Matt Westerhold, uh, Tim Schwanger, uh, Dave Waddington, and, and others helped with unloading the vehicles. Uh, this year, we're going to have about uh, 15. Uh, volunteers, including uh, the bas uh, Sandusky High School's basketball team, mm -hmm. is going to be there to help us uh, give residents a hand unloading. And uh, the city of uh, Sandusky has two large front end loaders that uh, will help uh, lift all these items into the dumpsters. And uh, Erie County uh, is also providing the large front end loaders, uh, too. So, again, we, we like that idea of uh, collaboration across uh, entities. So, that's on April 30th from uh, 9 to 12. And then on, uh, from April 30th to May 14th, we have spring plantings. We're asking residents to uh, plant flowers on, in their yard and to uh, make up flower pots and put those on their front porches. And there will be uh, workshops at Barnes and Lowe's uh, where people can get discounts and get some help in making those flower pots uh, up. And then the city uh, greenhouse is also going to be holding workshops on uh, how to uh, make up the flower pots. 
So we do that, and then on May 14th, we have opening day. So Cedar Point has its opening day. The city of Sandusky is going to have theirs. And uh, we're asking residents on that day to walk downtown. Uh, festivities will start around noon. And as they come down, they'll be hearing the uh, St. Mary's High School Band playing. Panther Band, distance. Panther Band. And they're going to be marching downtown. And, uh, and we'll meet at Mylander uh, Plaza. Uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll have some entertainment. We have speakers, including Eric, um, uh, Jason McClure from Cedar Point, Larry Fletcher, and uh, uh, Tom Darden is opening the an Tom opening Darden prayer with Tom Darden, prayer. former mayor of Sandusky. Right, and so uh, we'll we'll just make it. You know, this is a small town celebration, celebrating who we are, and um, building optimism about the about the, about our future. So that's what this is all about. And it's been uh, it you've been working on this. Well, we've been working on this since last fall. Yes, and we started with the drop off drive-through day, drive-through drop-off day then, and we were building it to this, what we're doing now. And we, out of that, we really saw the potential because it, uh, you know, we asked and people came to the table. And the so there's 200 was, volunteers already. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really been, um, um, it's been exhilarating. I mean, it just, it, almost you ask and people just say yes. So there's a new climate, I think, in this town. So, uh, so one of the things we were envisioning was that if we started this, uh, that people would start doing this not just start doing it. And I swear, when I drive through the city, I think, are they doing it? You know, because you, you look at different things and you, and I know, Eric, the city certainly has, uh, you know, cracked down on, on code uh, as part of this. You know, we're all a part of it. Why don't you talk a little bit about uh, the city's role in this company's coming? Yeah, the city is thrilled with the collaboration of the community that Companies Coming uh, is bringing to Sandusky. You know, we have stepped up our own individual efforts, but we often remind people there are 225 of us and there are over 25,000 of you. And so we do our best when the community is pulling in the same direction mm -hmm. and everybody's working together. And, and, you know, I've seen that firsthand uh, in the, my previous role in a neighborhood in Cleveland, uh, Ohio City. That was a neighborhood that was, was down on its heels, but really a strong group of citizen advocates working with a small uh, group of uh, entrepreneurs and small businesses and then the institutions of that neighborhood, the hospitals, the schools, etc., really pulled together. And what you find is once people start pulling in the same direction, really good things start to happen. And it can start small. You know, a good example just outside of here is we have recently replaced outdated uh, trash cans in downtown Sandusky with a more ornamental look. And the that's a very small change, but the number of people who have commented mm -hmm. to us about how much better that looks, mm -hmm. the work that Mark and that this group is making possible uh, will be a lot of small actions, mm -hmm. and then in the aggregate will lead to a much more beautiful and vibrant right. city. Right, right. That's, that's the idea. You know, and with the, the code, the housing code, you know, I've gotten like several calls from residents who say, you know, Matt, the city's just hammering me. And, you know, they're coming here at 8 o'clock in the morning and, you know, they want me to do something. And I'm like, well, we've been asking the city to crack down on this for years. There's not much we can do. But then they don't call back and say, oh, the city's being unfair. You know, they're, you know they seem to be, I mean, are you seeing cooperation? Yeah, we are certainly uh, hearing from people who are surprised that we might be uh, more aggressively enforcing things than maybe what they've seen in the past, and that's been made possible by the resources that the community has put in. And we are doing our best to responsibly enforce the code, not to punish anyone, right. but instead to protect those who have made investments in the city and want to see those investments protected. But we're also rolling out programs. So if that is the stick, per se, I would say there are carrots coming as well. We have things like exterior uh, home repair grants that we'll roll out this spring, down payment assistance for first-time home buyers, and then gap financing for home rehabilitation in addition to other programs that the city has had. So I think you'll see that we're a very willing partner to those who want to invest or live in the city of Sandusky, and that while we do have to more aggressively enforce uh, the code to protect the investment of those around us, we also have resources in place for those who need a helping hand to do the right thing with their property. Right, and then the land bank work continues as well. Uh, which is reclaiming properties that, that aren't going to be reused. Absolutely. You'll see a significant increase. In fact, I was just at the Conestoga meeting uh, last night on the south side of Sandusky, and they were thrilled that I think four to six properties in that neighborhood had recently come down. And I said, we're just getting started. We've got a great partnership with the county at the land bank. We have new resources uh, from our EMS fund that are being made available for blight in addition to other city resources that are available. So you will see a dramatically scaled up effort to remove those commercial and residential properties that cannot be saved from neighborhoods. Okay. 
All right, and Tondra, I wanted to talk to you because the Nehemiah kids are going to, they're, they're taking responsibility for one of the gateway cleanups. No, they, they're right. doing six parks. S okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Really, six parks? Yeah. yeah. So part of the gateways cleanup is, is you're coming in and you just want to make the gateways beautiful, all the roadways into the city that, that visitors come through. We want to make all of those, we want to give them attention. The city's agreed to, you know, follow up that attention. And then we, we said the parks, you decided we should do the parks too. Well, the response was so great with the gateway cleanup right. that we had, it was just so easy to get people to it take really on was. those assignments. That, uh, Were we surprised it was that easy or did we expect it to be that easy? <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah, because now it seems like, question. whoa, yeah, that was it, easier. I think it, we think it's easier than we thought it was going to be. Yeah, it was, I think an indication is... Uh, we're going to be placing those flower pots on uh, Butler Street. Right. And started asking for help at uh, That's right. like 10 a.m. on uh, like a Monday morning. And by 4 p.m., I had commitments for all 15. And that, so, that's the gateway that comes in the city on Milan 250. Yeah. And then Butler Street ramp goes down. And then there's going to be planters all along that, right? That's, right. And so it's just beautifying it. So this is the most traveled uh, entryway. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the parks, your kids are going to take, and your kids are how old? Okay, so we represent kids from kindergarten to eighth grade, and also some high school students that come back to become leaders of the small groups called Comeback Kids at the Nehemiah Center. Which is, is at after Campbell School, school. Yeah, after school program at the old Campbell School. I'm the program director, and I thought it was a great opportunity. I want to thank you, Mark, for um, offering the opportunity to give our kids a chance to give back. We're a 501c3 volunteer organization, so we, you know, ask a lot of support from the community to run our program. This is our first uh, opportunity to give back to the community. I have about 15 kids. We're going to get a van. Uh, me and my husband, Clifton Frisbee, will be the leaders and supervisors of this portion. And we have six area parks that our kids are going to be cleaning up on that morning. Which parks? Do you know? We have Farwell Park, we have Orlando Pace Park, we have Foxborough Park, and then these three that were added last week were... Uh, the JC's. JC so Scott, Park, Scott May Park, um, the JC Baseball Field, and baseball then Whiteman field Weaver. And Whiteman Weaver, okay. yes. So the kiddos don't know that part yet, but <laughs> they're all, they all have, uh, through the six years of our organization being in effect in this community, have learned the uh, service, heart of, having a heart of service. So I think it's going to be great. And I have kindergarten through actual uh, juniors in this 15-man uh, group. Right. The teenagers come back and sort of mentor the younger children. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they continue the program in continue, a leadership position. A, absolutely. And... Um, so have you talked to the kids about this, and yep. how do they respond? They respond. You know, we, we run, we operate Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and, and at the end, at 6 o'clock, uh, through our relationship with Second Harvest Food Bank, we feed our kids a hot, wonderful meal from our wonderful teams in the Kids Cafe. Um, but at that time, our kids are always running up asking, can they help serve? Can they help serve? So whenever this opportunity came in effect, I asked a few of the kids, would they be interested in helping serve the community? And they said, oh, absolutely, just tell us what we need to do, Ms. Tantra. And okay. so we got them together. Well, you, you do have a, a, <laughs> a, certain, a certain way <laughs> of getting things done. Well, it's just a question. It's just an ask. Yes, I yes. And you're, yeah, I mean, you're, you're. From my heart. Yes. And I think that's what works. That's it's why genuine. it works. <laughs> it is. Something. It is. You don't have to convince me. <laughs> and it's, it's an attitude, too. You know, she always asks, are you all in? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be uh, all in. But I think the, the emerging generation that we have in Sandusky, we got some great kids. If anybody has an opportunity to stop by and, and visit and take a tour of the Nehemiah Center, 1215 Campbell Street, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 3 to 6. You can stop and have dinner with us at 6 o'clock. It's, it's an awesome thing. To it, see really it, is. it really is. It really is. operation. I have kids that are, have been committed for the entire 6. And uh, it's just great to see these kids in the community. It really is. I agree. I agree you know. completely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I've had a chance to meet your kids yep. and through the years as well. Yep. Uh, for all those years, actually, all of them. so it's been it's been uh, a lot of fun, and there's a lot of gratitude uh, 
to, you can see the gratitude from the children for, for having something to do, but it's also, it, there's gratitude to just see this in action yeah, and yeah. be part of it, for me at least, and, and, and I know too. for you yeah, as well. I, I, I just, I'm grateful that I get to do this. I get to do this. And I think if anybody goes there, they're going to see the same thing. They will. It's very it's cool. It's very cool. Tom, uh, you're with Lowe's Home Improvement. Yes. And, and you have a program that enables, uh, Lowe's has a program that enables you to, to come into the community. Tell us about what Lowe's is taking on. Well, Lowe's, um, Lowe's Corporate, uh, we, it, we have a, a, a set of principles. Um, two of those principles, number one, are be a part of something larger. Um, and th that basically means be a part of the community, um, be a neighbor. Um, the second is be who we say we are. Uh, so when we say that we are going to be a part of this community, that we're going to be a driving force uh, 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 to help uh, community organizations, um, we actually get out there, hands uh, down, feet on the street, uh, we'll get in there and build, volunteer, do whatever we have. And this isn't new for Lowe's. I mean, you've had different projects in the city over yeah. the years. Can you talk about some of those projects well, in the, the past? Lowe's, Lowe's Heroes Project. Um, the Lowe's Heroes Project we've helped uh, with... Uh, uh, back to the Wild. Uh, we've worked with uh, some church organizations. Uh, we basically have a budget. Uh, we put together a volunteer group. Uh, we donate the materials. We build the structures. We uh, paint the rooms. We put in the landscaping. Um, and these are projects that actually can take weeks to continue, mm -hmm. to, to, to complete. Mm -hmm. So uh, this actually is not part of that. Uh, this is part of that larger uh, 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 vision of being being a part of the community and 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 having the freedom to do that, not not so corporately defined, so that local managers can make local decisions for the communities they serve. Absolutely, uh, and that comes down uh, directly from from corporate. When Mark came in, Mark and I actually met uh, last summer, uh, and so I saw Mark coming, and he, he he let me know about this, and I said, Mark, absolutely, let me see what I can do. Uh, and uh, it, it was very easy for me to get the green light. Um, also, uh, when I placed a uh, sign-up sheet in our, our, our break room, sent out a quick email uh, about what the city uh, needed, um, checked on it in about two days, maybe three days, it was completely full. And, that, and that's the idea. That's what you keep talking about, Marcus, is, is, is helping people understand to take responsibility for their own community. And you know, and, and for years it was it was you know when are they going to get their stuff together at City Hall? You know when is City Hall going to fix everything? And and your whole philosophy and the philosophy of the group is that it begins with you. <laughs> well, I, I've said this in other conversations. Uh, what really turned me on to thinking in that way is uh, Mick uh, Cornett from the mayor of uh, Oklahoma City. Um, they described how it was a backward town, the worst town in Oklahoma, and, and now it's this shining star. But it's because he went to the citizens and said, no one's going to save us. Right. If we're going to turn the city around, we have to do it ourselves. And with that appeal, uh, they built new freeways, they built new bridges, they built museums, and uh, restructured the streets in the downtown, and lost a million pounds was one of his projects. They had people losing weight. So um, it really we was should, a great we should, example we should do that. Of, of how <laughs> communities can come together if people understand that it's their responsibility. Interesting. And Larry, uh, you can put a regional perspective on this because, uh, you know, in, in recent years, you know, the regionalism of our area is what's important. So what's good for Erie County is good for Ottawa County. And you, you are the director of the Visitors Bureau for both counties. So can you talk a little bit about why this, why the Visitors Bureau would see this as an important effort? Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah, so Lake Erie Shores and Islands is the Visitors Bureau for Ottawa and Erie counties. Uh, thrilled to be part of this project. Love the name, companies coming, because you know we're in an area here that will welcome about nine million people a year, and uh, they're already showing up. I mean, fishing's been great so far this spring. The birders are going to be coming next, and then Cedar Point's going to open on May 6th, and it all just keeps going from there. So, you know, a lot of these people, of course, are coming for their annual trip, or they come for multiple weekends, but a lot of them will be coming to the region for the first time. And it's often that first impression they get, and that can include 
whether or not the streets are clean, right. whether or not there, there's litter blowing around. So uh, an act as simple as this event, where it's going to just create this nice welcoming, this place is beautiful atmosphere for these, for these visitors, uh, is a perfect thing for the Visitors Bureau to be involved with. To build that reputation, yeah. to build that yeah. reputation as a destination region. Uh, and Eric, certainly you know about, uh, you know, what's good for Sandusky, is good for Huron, is good for Port Clinton. Can you talk a little bit about that, the regionalism of this? Absolutely. We're all in this together, and, and we know that Sandusky's fortunes are going to, to improve if it's surrounded by strong areas. And we really see Sandusky and the surrounding community to the point of Lake Erie Shores and Islands as really just a collection of jewels throughout the city, from Vermilion to Catawba and everything in between. Uh, and there's so much to offer from the lakefront in those communities to the downtowns of those communities, to the major attractions, to the rural destinations like Quarry Hill and, uh, you know, the winery and the orchard. You know, you, there's a little bit of everything there all is. over this place when you add that all together, all in close proximity. And the more that we're able to show that off in a positive light, the more willing people are going to be to explore other parts of the area to come back and right. spend more time here. Right. And if, and if I could add one, one uh, exclamation point on this, the amount of economic impact that is generated from the visitors mm. is significant. Uh, $1.3 billion a year just in Ottawa Ooh. and Erie County alone in, in economic impact from tourism. And so it's, and that's a lot of tax dollars coming into the city that can help with other programs. Uh, so that's another thing to keep in mind as, as we're cleaning this up. And then the other thing that happens is that as we're doing this for our visitors, as this event is being built, as it's cleaning this up for the company that's coming, but it's also cleaning it up for all the For ourselves, too. So, that's right. So it's that quality of life that, uh, that improves for all the residents of the region that comes from this act that we're doing under the plan of let's clean up for the company that's coming, but it's for us too. Yeah. So if you uh, if you want to volunteer, Mark, do they contact me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> which you can. You can contact me at the Sandusky Register. The best way is through email, which is uh, westerhold at sanduskyregister.com, and I'll get your information to Mark, who's really coordinating the volunteers. Well. Really, I think we're, we're probably booked as far as volunteers uh, as, uh, for the events that we have. Where residents can really help is in their own yards. Uh, they can plant flowers and put the flower pots up as, as, a, as a signal that they're participating in, in this uh, moving, the momentum we're trying to build and moving the city forward. Uh, they can participate by, by coming to opening day, uh, walking from their homes to downtown. That's so May 14th. Right, so, you know, they can help by cleaning up and taking pride in their, their homes, their neighborhoods, their street. Um, I think the weather is supposed to clear up this afternoon. Right. So if you have time, you could go out this afternoon because I'm looking for these things as I drive to <laughs> and from work through the city. And I'm convinced it's happening. Okay, well, what we want... I, you know, I take pictures and I think, well, I, I don't know if that really says that, but it says it to me, you know. Like there was a house on uh, uh, Madison and Pearl Street that was getting siding. Uh, that's been a, a hurting house for years and years. Yeah, it's exciting to see all the uh, um, all the demo work that's being done, but all the building and, and uh, remodeling its projects that are taking place. I'm seeing new fences around yards and things, so uh, it really is encouraging. But residents really can help by understanding this is the time to build momentum, and whatever they do will add to that momentum. So you know, take a little bit more pride in your yard, take more pride in your home contribute to, to really making this uh, a desirable city where people want to come and live, and uh, uh, that's what we're going after. And this really helps to start building momentum for the bicentennial as well, which uh, is two years away. Yeah, so the city of Sandusky will celebrate its 200th birthday in 2018, and a lot of the work that we have been doing at the city and doing the comprehensive and the master plan for the city has really been around using that not only as a day to celebrate what is special about the city's history, but to build on the momentum that people like Mark and others are creating so that we use that as a springboard into our next 200 years in a really positive way. And, and we know that we're well on our way because of activities like this. We feel a, there's a groundswell. It's working, yeah. Coming, and and we're, uh, we're going to do our best to, to put that in the best light as possible. So uh, April 23rd is Gateway's cleanup from 500 prizes we're giving away. <laughs> how, how many prizes is it? 
Is it, there is it, is it a, new, a new car? Is it a Corvette that we have? Well, Tom, can we talk? Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, there will be prizes. We'll but there are some decent prizes. Yes, there's there 30 or so decent prizes at business. Right. I know Lowe's has, right. has provided some, some uh, incentive for that and other businesses. And Lake Erie uh, Shores and Island is out there uh, talking to their, their uh, associates. And uh, so there are so they're, they're going to be some nice prizes. There will be incentives for coming downtown. On so you, you, if you had to ballpark the value of the prizes, 100000 Oh, at least. <laughs> <laughs> at least. <laughs> Mark, we need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> but there will be prizes, and, and they are nice prizes. And, and in order to qualify for the prizes on opening day, you just have to be there. You get a ticket. Be there. Well, you have to register, and uh, serving our seniors is going to demand a table where they'll register people. And, and um, uh, Lake Erie Shores and Island is going to be there to help give out the, the prizes. And, you know, it's just it's going to be... It's going to be a celebration. Yes, that's so. what we're going for. So it starts by... People coming down, and the more they come down, the 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 more successful we are, and it helps to propel the city forward and, and you know create this great future that we all want. So participate. So did we did we touch on everything you wanted to do? Mark has been the organizer of this, and and uh, it keeps us all on track. So did, did we touch everything we wanted to touch on today? I, I think we did. And what I haven't covered, or what we haven't covered, the register will. The register will in future news articles uh, coming this week and all next month up until the dates, and I want to mention that Serving Our Seniors, that Between the Lines is brought to you by Serving Our Seniors. When you need a friend... No, no, no. <laughs> someone to call. Someone to call when you need a friend. 419-624-1856. Someone to call when you need help. When you need help. <laughs> oh, my gosh. My days, uh, my days as hosts are numbered. Yeah, I, I don't think you're going to get paid this month. For, <laughs> all right. Fun. Well, thank you all for being on the program today. Thank we really appreciate you being match. here and, yes. and being part of this. It's been a, it, for us, it's been a, a great experience to be part of this. Go Sandusky. Yes. 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 Thank you very much. This has been Between the Lines Live at SandusskyRegister.com.